Hey everyone, it's Harry from uh, Brogue 8186. If you missed last week's lecture or you need a reminder, there's two ways you can get caught up. One, I'm going to do a demo quickly here on how to do this, but uh, if you go to econastoga and you look at the how to create an MVC SQLite ASP.NET Core C Sharp project with EF under week 10, it can guide you pretty much through the entire thing. Now, just be careful because there are, depending on your setup, it will be different, um, or there could be different errors. Just keep, you know, uh, keep trying to fix the errors. You'll get it running eventually, or contact me in a DM on Discord or uh, in your mail. So again, um, the first thing that we want to do is make sure that .NET Core SDK is installed. Grab the latest one, .NET 8, uh, for this example. And then we'll just create a new project. So it's .NET New MVC. And this will create the project inside of the folder that we're in. In the sample, in, on econosoga, it does say dash n, your project name. Um, so, you know, if you were doing this on a, on a final or a midterm or whatever, or an assignment, you could do something like this, and it would create the folder assignment in here. But I'm going to do it directly in my week 10 folder. So you should see. You should see it quickly creates controllers, models, views, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, then it says you're required to get the NuGet packages. So if you recall, if you recall, um, NuGet is basically the same as npm, um, where we can download packages that are pre-made, pre so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. So there are quite a few. Uh, basically, they all involved Entity Framework Core. And again, if you missed the lecture, you're gonna have to kind of catch up on what Entity Framework Core is yourself, but shouldn't be a big deal. So we're gonna add these packages, and then we need to add uh, the Entity Framework Core tools as well. So again, you can go check these out on the site. Once you have this done, I would probably .NET build and then also .NET run your site just to make sure that everything works. So .NET run. This should start up the web server and open a browser or if you click on the local host. And you should get a screen that looks very similar to this. In fact, let's see if we can... Uh, there's enough room to do that this way. So as I said before, um, we're going to be doing something called code first database, meaning we're going to create the mar our models and then create the database after this. And this is why we need to install the .NET, .NET Core and Entity or sorry, .NET Ent Entity Framework. So I'm going to create a new model and we're just going to call it item dot cs and then i'm going to you know just paste in this code and we have um, id name description in this scenario we need an id for our class because we're going to actually create a table with this and as per your database courses you you know that you must have a primary key if you're creating a table we also want to name our namespace in this case Mine's going to be namespace week 10 and then dot models. And then we'll have our item in there. Now the namespace we're going to use later, uh, but notice that your controller also has a namespace. And, um, pardon me, Would these, this will become apparent of why we're using these slightly later in the class. Next, we're going to create something called the DB context, and DB context is a connector, and it's almost like middleware, kind of uh, like Node, where, sorry, where we used Mongoose to connect to MongoDB inside of Node. This application DB context that we're going to create is a similar in that um, it's a, a function that we're inheriting or a class we're inheriting from. from .NET Framework. So we're going to make a new folder called data. And inside of the data folder, oops, data, we're going to make a file called application 
TV context. And you can pretty much name this whatever. Most people call it, you know, whatever the application is. So this might have been week 10 DB context or, you know, whatever, assignment 3 DB context. But most people name the connector kind of like this. And I'm going to copy and paste this right from our code, changing our namespace to week 10 data. Notice that uh, namespace, it, Microsoft doesn't really care what your namespace is called. Uh, in, in relation to where the file is located. However, most programmers put the namespace in the, in the directory that they're they're working in so that we can find the stuff pretty easy. Now you'll notice we have the using Microsoft Entity Framework core, which allows us to inherit from DB context. And um, in your on your VS code, when you've done this, you might actually have an error here under item. Because mine says using your project name dot models, but your project name doesn't exist, so we have to obviously change this namespace. So this item should become um, blue or whatever after you tell it where it is, right? Now, quickly as a reminder, this is just a class, right? So if I get rid of DB context and that that constructor, notice that this is this is just a an, uh, an accessor for DB set item, much like we had before. We had list item, or you know, I had public string, first name in person, something like that, right? So this DB context is just a class that we're making. We're inheriting from DB context a Microsoft library or class, and they require us to have this constructor. And notice that our this constructor takes options and we're not we don't really have to change too much in here right now but the important part is this item item set so instead of it being called a list we call it db set because when we go to access items and well, i'll show you this later when we go into the controllers uh, our db context will actually allow us to do stuff in here like crud operations um, sorting all this kind of cool stuff so if i had a person class and i wanted to create a new table for person you know i would define it something like this after making the model so that's kind of how what the DB context is for and the last thing we have to do for the setup is open up program.cs if you remember program.cs is like our server.js file in node when we install express and then you know our mongoose and all of this we have to do the same here. So this is actually instantiating our server object, which ends up running. And we're going to actually include the code so that we can connect to our database. So first things first, we have to use a Microsoft Entity Framework. And then we have to add a service. So it's builder.services, add DB context. We're going to add the one that we just created, application DB context. And notice, again, in your VS Code, you, this might be underlined, so we might ha actually have to do data, or sorry, week 10 dot data dot application DB context, or you can use this up in the using right here. All right. This data source equals your DB name. This will actually create a file because we're using something called SQLite. It's a very, very light internal version of SQL. Um, that will create a file inside of your your actual project, as opposed to you know SQL Express or some cloud service. You know this will be kind of self-hosted. So I'm just going to make this one called Week Ten DB. In this scenario, everything else looks okay. So because we've done all these changes, I'm going to actually restart the server. I'm going to re rebuild the whole program first to make sure everything is okay. I have a couple warnings, so let's see what it says. Uh, nullable, so it looks like it might be in models. Yeah, these didn't come with nullable items, so we're going to fix this real quick. Just so we don't have any warnings. And that looks okay. Next, what do we do? So, before, last week, I had you guys made uh, your controllers and your views yourself. So if you remember, I had you open up Home Controller, and I think you made a page, I don't know if it was about or whatever it was, and then you instantiated a, mo mo a model here. Then you pass back, you know, the view. 
And then inside of the views folder, you had to actually create a directory and then create the CSHTML file. This time we're going to use some code that will allow us to generate this controller and view ourselves. So again, this is part seven and we can do, or actually we have to install the .NET tool. So we'll do, um, it might look different. This might look different on your screen because I already have it installed. So just be careful of that. And then the next one you actually see here, we have to slightly modify. So what I usually do is I take uh, the scaffolding command and paste it into a text editor of whatever sorts. And I just added it. So .NET ASP dash code generator controller name. In this case, I want to ge generate the items controller, which we've created the model for. And I want to use the, the model item, which we have. So everything else looks fine. I don't have to change too much here. If you're doing this for another file like person, you know, you'd have to come in here and change this. It might be people controller, persons controller, and you'd have to tell it what, what model you want. Anyway, get around the code. Hopefully this works. It looks like it's building. And if everything's okay here. You should see added controller and then added the views. So this actually gives us our items controller, which we'll come back and look at in a second. But notice there's, you know, all of our CRUD operations in here. And same with the the items folder in under, under the views. We have an index, but we also have create, delete, edit, and details. So it's done a lot of the heavy lifting for us, which is pretty handy. Now I know, again, these are a lot of steps so far just to set this up, but it makes, us, it makes our life slightly easier uh, later on. Now, one last thing, our entire project is set up, but if you run this right now, oops, I didn't mean to do that, but if I run this right now, this way, and I refresh our page, oh, I copied and pasted this, oops, sorry, I do it again. So if I run this, you know, I can go to the items page, but technically I'm going to get an error and it says SQLite error, no such table items. Well, even though we've set this all up and we have our model and we have our data connector, we ha actually haven't um, updated a database. So an entity framework, we call this a migration. And the migration tool will remember certain um, steps that we are taking in order to add add stuff to this database. So the first thing that we actually do have to do is install the tool. If you had problems with this in class, um, you might want to specify the version at the end and you could do version 8.0. I think 8. star will start the latest version of 8. Um, but I won't do this because I don't want to screw up my install, but you should you, you have to do this first. So that's number one. And then we can just run the migration. So I'm going to run the migration .idf migrations add and then initial create. But this initial create can be whatever you want it to be. Typically, I specify it as whatever I'm working on. So for example, if I was working on people or person, I would call this migration person. And since this is our first one, we'll call it initialize or initiate. And when this runs, you'll see a folder that gets created called migrations. When you create the migrations folder, just take a look at it, but it's generated, so you don't want to you don't want to touch anything in here. But check it out. There's two functions: one called up, one called down. And when you run this migration, you can actually see it's almost starting to look like SQL. So it says migration builder create table items, and then it says ID integer name string. Then we have the primary key, so on and so forth. You have to add a migration every time you add a new model and you want it to add and want to add it to the database. So if I add a person model under uh, yeah models and then I add it to the application DB contact as people, I have to then run .NET EF migrations and then I also have to run this next command .NET EF database update. This database update command should fill in our week 10 DB file over here. So when I run this if everything went smooth, I should be able to run the server. It looks like it's good. I should be able to refresh this page and I should get what looks like a list, but obviously nothing's in there. Now, if I click create new, type in a name, type a description, you know, we can actually connect to this database and start using it. It's kind of cool. So that was just a crash course. 
basically everything I said is on this page. You can follow it down to the letter, get it working, and use it for your lab and upcoming assignments.